So by day, I'm a septic guy and a plumber, and by night, I'm a bail bondsman. And both of those jobs, no matter which one I do, at the end of the day, I still go home feeling dirty. But every once in a while, I see some stuff that'll clog a drain or a courtroom that just leaves me scratching my head and asking myself, how in the world could this happen? So I've got a heck of a story for you, and maybe at the end of this, you'll be able to give me some feedback on what the hell is going on in the world that this could happen. So last night, one of my bail bonding customers that's a frequent flyer got himself arrested again. Now, whenever you say that a customer is a frequent flyer to a bail bondsman, it doesn't mean that he's getting miles. What it means is he's getting arrested all the time. And let's face it, it's not that difficult to avoid getting arrested. It's kind of like DIY plumbing. Kind of messy if you don't know what you're doing, but not rocket science. So this guy shows up all the time, kind of like your girlfriend's period. You don't know exactly whenever he's going to show up but it's gonna be about once a month. And that's the case with this guy. Yet again, he gets arrested. Now this guy, he's a pretty low level offender. You know, he's always getting arrested for dumb stuff, nickel and dime stuff, dealing mostly. But the thing is, is this time, whenever I looked up his charges, he had apparently struck gold because his bond was at $250,000. And I'm like, holy crap, what did he do? I know people that go to jail for murder that their bond isn't that high, but apparently, he tripped all the bells and whistles and the police department just really hooked him up because they set him up with 18 charges. Everything from trying to elude the police, which obviously he's not very good at, to resisting arrest, apparently he's not good at that either, to multiple controlled substances and even maintaining a dwelling to sell said controlled substances. So it's like, holy crap, I've never seen his bond that high. All in all, they hit him with like 18 different charges. And let's be real about it, the police aren't wrong here. He's been dealing for like 15 years. If ever there was a criminal that the cops just maintained copies of the forms pre-filled out with all his information to where all they had to do was date it and submit it for his arrest paperwork, this would be the kind of client that the cops would have that for. And yet, the very next day at his bond reduction hearing, the court saw fit to reduce his bond from $250,000 all the way down to $25,000. That's like a 90% discount. You don't even get that kind of deal at Black Friday. What is this, the court's version of a clearance event? I mean, I get it. The court really wants to make it easy for drug dealers to get back out on the street. I mean, what would everybody do if we didn't have drug dealers, you know? We might actually be forced to get honest jobs and go to work and pay our taxes, but Apparently, that's not the court's priority in this case. So this isn't the first time that I've seen massive charges just disappear overnight in the legal system, and it prompted me to be a little curious this time and wonder, how does this happen? So I wandered on down to the assistant district attorney's office and walked in, and there in front of me was a desk with a receptionist, and I just asked the question. I wanted to know if they had any data on how many distribution charges got dismissed before trial. And she said she didn't have that data, which is perfectly reasonable, so she made a phone call and got me an assistant district attorney. Well, when that nice lady came out and I asked my question, I said, hey, listen, I'm just wanting to know what percentage of distribution charges get dismissed without ever going to trial. And she says, why do you want to know that? And I said, I'm just curious. And she said, no, you're not. You're up to something. Okay. <laughs> I would really just like to know the answer. So she steps back into her office and uses the phone. She steps back out and says, somebody will be with me shortly. I am then joined by two additional assistant district attorneys and three members of the sheriff's department that are currently working court security in the building. Now, instead of feeling like I just poked my head into the assistant district attorney's office to ask a question about stats, I feel more surrounded than a rare Pokemon. So now that they've pretty much formed a circle around me with three ADAs in front of me and three sheriff's officers behind me, I asked my question again. I was like, do you have any data on what percentage of distribution charges get dismissed before they ever go to trial? And she says, no, we don't have that data. I'm like, really? You mean assistant district attorneys and the district attorney's office doesn't track the success rate, the closure rate, the conviction rate? Like they don't keep track of that. That's not like a performance indicator or a KPI, a key performance in indicator on how well the district attorney's office is doing their job. Now, even though I've done absolutely nothing wrong, I am standing there and I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. So it's time to exit stage right. So I say, you know what? 
it's probably the wrong place to ask. I can probably just fill out a FOIA request or a Freedom of Information Act request. The state has their own version of that, just like the federal government does, and I can probably get that there. I would assume that government employee performance is a public record. Now, I'm not being sheepish and shy whenever I ask these questions. I'm making direct eye contact with the three ADAs that are there, kind of looking on back and forth, like, does nobody have an answer to this question? And finally, one of the guy ADA speaks up and he says, listen, most distribution cases are dismissed before they ever go to trial for various reasons. I don't have the numbers, but that's pretty much it. And I think to myself, well, I've almost got an answer to this question. I now know that the, that the dismissal rate is greater than 50%. And that confounded me just a little bit because I thought that the criminal justice system was a two-part process. I thought the cops go out on the street and do their job, supposed to do everything right, and they give all the paperwork and the bad guy over to the ADA's office and they do their job right, and drug dealers go to jail. But apparently, greater than 50% of the time, that doesn't happen. So I got curious, why not? So I've got a buddy that I went to high school with who's currently a detective in the same county and I went down and I asked him and I was like, hey, what's going on with this? And he's like, listen, we do everything right. Forms have to be filled out right. There's procedures that have to be done. Everything has to be done right and we try our damnedest to do it. But no matter what happens when we turn everything over, even if we do go to our assigned court dates, they dismiss the charges. And we, as the detectives and the police, have absolutely no idea why. So now I'm even more confused. So I started doing a little digging on the internet and I found another interesting fact. Apparently, the US Attorney's Office has a 99.6% conviction rate. In other words, if the US Attorney brings charges, 99.6% of the time, they get a guilty verdict. That's a pretty good success rate. As a matter of fact, I feel comfortable with my tax dollars getting that kind of success rate. So as I was concluding my meeting with the detective, he let me know that by his calculations, roughly 20% of the cases move forward to prosecution and roughly 80% are dismissed or thrown out or whatever by the DA's office and they don't know why. So now, the feds have a 99.6% conviction rate and the ADA's office is throwing out 80% of their cases. His numbers aren't official, they're just what he's kept track of. And that led me to the question of this video. Can anybody tell me what is going on in the background that there is such a disparity between the US attorney and your local district attorney? Because the way I see it, if they're only gonna prosecute 20% of the cases that arrests are made on, they're either wasting police time, wasting criminals time, wasting tax dollars, or what? I don't know, I'm not a legal expert. If somebody could just jump in the comments and let me know what the hell is going on, because it almost looks like the ADA's office is incompetent.